hacer cosas y andar. Yeah. Yeah. So good evening, Pratik. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, please introduce yourself in forty seconds. Yes. So my name is Pratik Nandu Kumar Kote. I was born on twenty six January, hence the name given Pratik, sir. So I have done my bachelor's of science in physics from University of Pune. Later, I did my master's of arts from Pune University. Uh, sir, I have done NCC where I did two national camps, and I have played water polo during my college time. Sir, my hobbies include playing badminton. Uh, online chess, cooking, as well as running. Sir. Yeah. Uh, so where did badminton originate? So, uh, it is believed that badminton was originated in the city of Pune, and it was called as Pune in uh, India, and later, sir, it went uh, out uh, with the Britishers, which was basically started in uh, the city of Pune. Okay. Do you know a uh, brief history about it? How it originated and how did it go to the Britishers then? Uh, no, sir. I'm not aware about it, but I uh, was only aware about the, the origin of it. Okay. Can you just briefly tell us about that story, or do you know the background about that? Uh, no, sir. I'm not aware about the background. Okay. Uh, name any badminton tournaments you're aware of, Indian as well as international. You can start with Indian first. Sorry, sir. I play badminton on the daily basis, sir, but I do not follow it uh, on the television, sir. Okay, no worries. Uh, so you say that uh, your father was in Havaldar as per the DAF, right? Yes. Sir. So, uh, what are your opinions about the recent Agnipath scheme controversy? Yes, sir. So recently, the Agnivir scheme was brought in with a perspective Agnivir. of reducing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, was brought in uh, with a perspective of reduction of the average age of army. Mm -hmm. At the same time, creating a dedicated cadre uh, as a backup, uh, as India is not into the compulsory military. Second, sir, also to reduce the pension bill which the government was incurring. So these were the main uh, aims with which it was created. Sir, the issues uh, which the students are being protesting are because of uh, uh, that the 70% of the strength will be sacked out and only 25% of the strength will be uh, allowed to continue for the rest of uh, the remaining term. So that is the main issue as people are taking army as a in job rather than as a service. So that is the issue which is very. Okay, so what are your opinions on the same? Should the uh scheme continue as it is going right now or do you feel that there are some changes to be made right yes sir so i believe this scheme is in the interest of the country as every year it will uh, be giving not just employment but a country one lakh soldier which will be uh, which will even be, uh, work as a reserved soldier uh, if in case of any contingency which happens, it will uh, help reduce the uh, budget, uh, which majoritarily being consumed on the pension. So even that will empower country to put more funds into uh, the modernization and of the weapons and even indigenization or into terms of research and development. So sir, I believe that this will be a good step in the right direction. Okay, but then. Uh... Do you support the uh, protesters or their concerns? Because they were violent protest, right? So, uh, how how to go about the grievances? How would you redress the grievances of the concerned aspirants? Sir, my uh, sympathy lies with the aspirants, but sir, violence do not justify any sort of protest that you were aspiring because it also caused a huge damage to the infrastructure project. So, so uh, I believe if there are some concerns, particularly regarding the jobs and service, I would want to address uh, in the same words of the uh, Lieutenant General. Uh, I'm not able to take uh, recall the name, sir, but uh, he quoted that uh, army is not a job, it is a service. So I think sir, it should be treated as uh, uh, the same thing, it should be treated as service rather than just a job. Now, what is the difference between job and service? 
so there is a very thin line between job and service uh which i, and I understand job is something which is done for the remuneration purpose uh majorityly uh, or in hope of getting paid back but the service is something which is considered to be as a duty uh which is uh, done by every uh, citizen of the country as a part of having any remunerative gains or not so that is what i believe okay so you mean to say that job is more concerned with the remunerative aspect and service includes uh, both or may may not include remuneration but it always includes some kind of work to be done that's what you say right yes sir okay so let's say if in all india service you preparing for all india services right that's a service to the nation right yes, sir. Uh, let's say if the government decides to cut your salary for any contingency right would you be willing to continue with the service even if it is not financially viable sir yes sir as the service is more about uh, doing uh, a lot of things rather than just based upon the uh, rather than the financial incentives which it provides that uh, gives oneself an opportunity to work for a greater cause and i believe the civil servant whenever they are preparing or whenever they are in the service they are more concerned about that greater cause rather than uh, being pitted to the interest of oneself okay so just wanted to know uh, why have you taken civil services when you have come from an army background why didn't you pursue for the same sir there is a life uh, event which happened in my life which motivated me to uh, shift from uh, as a defense aspirant towards the civil servant sir okay so if you may permit i would want to yeah sure so uh, in 2019 i, I was at alabad uh, in ssb so i was conference out and uh, i believe sir that was the time when i was uh, emotionally vulnerable and when the speech which was delivered by president he said that this is not the end of your life and this is not the service uh, this does not mean that it is the end of service also it means that there are some other things in life that you can even do better mm-hmm. that is what we believe and sir uh, it gave me a lot of time to introspect that what my area of uh, things are so when i was waiting for uh, the train my train sir it was a few hours so i saw a lot of disturbing things malnutrition there was a child of the same age of my nephew sir so there were those things that it touched me like why we cannot do a lot of things for them why we cannot provide them food shelter and why we cannot give them a dignified life sir and that is the reason i decided to pursue civil services and so what what different aspects would you bring to this civil service because this is something which uh many ngos and the government is also working hard on these aspects which you mentioned right that is malnourishment mm-hmm. and uh, so what difference would you make in the services that makes you feel that you are the right candidate yes sir sir uh, i would increase my accessibility i will keep the open door policy that any person having any grievance uh, can walk through the door and share their grievance and we can make administration more uh, people centric than work centric second sir uh, i would work uh, in a way where uh, my basic uh, priorities will be uh, to provide better nutrition under pds scheme mid term meal scheme in schools at the same time uh, improvement of the education sir as you mentioned sir ngos are also doing work so i would also collaborate with ngos in order to provide better uh, education to the school children sir and sir one of the idea that i think is we need to start cooperative education also sir where mm-hmm. whole village whole town can contribute to the digitization of the school so sir and sir i think that in a way can be a revolutionary step as everyone in equitable manner can contribute and learn i think so these are the area i would want to do differently okay uh, you might be aware since you talked about malnourishment right that this year uh, this year uh, we are celebrating the international year of millets right? yes, so what steps do you think india is taking 
towards millet cultivation and what are the benefits of cultivating millets? Yes, sir. So, in, in 2018, India declared uh, the millet as nutritional, uh, that's a nutritional uh, super millet or super diet. Uh, apart from that, sir, even there is a national mission uh, for that. So, thirdly, international year for uh, millets have been declared in the United Nations as 2023. So, yeah. the mm -hmm. advantage of advantage of millets includes, sir, it is highly uh, nutritious. Uh, it is drought uh, as well as heat tolerant crop. Uh, it is also resistant to various pest attacks, and it also includes low investment and low input cost is also low. And uh, sir, it is uh, it can be even uh, I say it also increases the productivity of soil if it is done in a rotational manner. So that is also beneficial for various sectors. Uh, so these are the things that I am talking about. What about the nutrition aspect? Since yes. you're talking about malnourishment here. Yes, sir. So as I mentioned in the point one, that uh, it it is highly nutritious, as uh, the various contents such as calcium, iron, okay. uh, the vitamins are higher in amount. For example, sir, red gram, uh, the tur, jwar, uh, etc., moong dal, urad dal, etc., they are also nutritious. So that also comes under. Yeah, but uh, are they millets? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Uh, I think I'm, I'm sure. Okay. You need to verify your facts. Okay. So, sure. uh, but there are other millets also. Like ragi, you know, kodo millets, you might have heard about it. So that they are also on the development. It's okay. So since you also have mentioned about water polo, can you tell me something about the sport? How is it played? Yeah. So it is played in four quarters of five to eight minutes. There are seven players. Oh, the number one cap is always given to the goalkeeper. Uh, there are wingmen uh, whose goal is to attack the other sport and score a goal. So this game requires a lot immense amount of stamina, agility, strength. Uh, and I believe, sir, this is one of the toughest games. Uh, as uh, it was started as something called as uh, for fun in England, but later sir, it also uh, became an Olympic sport. So uh, this is basic about it. Okay. Uh, why is India not excelling so much at water polo? So water polo, as I mentioned, there are various constraints to it. First, sir, it requires swimming pool. Uh, which is itself a very costly asset. Then it comes to the water as well as management of water, which can also include cleaning of it, which also includes substantial amount of financial cost. But apart from that, uh, the essence are very uh, minimum. Even in, uh, I went to... Uh, I am sorry. My just, uh, PhD, I, was, I, I am losing you. Uh, Am I audible? Yeah, audible, yeah, 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 you are. Okay. Your bandwidth is low, it says. Okay, fine. Okay. Sorry, sir. Take it, take it. Uh, so, sir, uh, yes. So, first, sir, it, is, uh, it requires infrastructure. Secondly, mm -hmm. sir, uh, even the ma uh, support management and repair of it cost you. Sir, sir, okay. Lack of so, you mean to say that uh, it's being a costly affair and the requirement of uh, you know a lot of investment so that isn't happening right also sir awareness about the game is also awareness okay uh, have you heard of Kelo India yes sir and what is that scheme the Kelo India scheme is under Ministry of Youth Affairs which is uh, aimed to promote the sports culture in India uh, which fo mainly focuses on creating infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure, uh, boost boosting investment in the sport, and uh, creating a new generation of uh, sports person in India, which will be more aware and uh, uh, which will also work in securing various uh, medals in the international forum. Okay. Uh, you see, in swimming, uh, India is yet to achieve a lot of 
mileage into that domain right we don't have much of uh, the famous international level famous personalities yet so why do you think that uh, you know people like michael phelps or for that reason you know uh, the united states of america has uh, always had a advantage in terms of swimming right they are dominating the sport unlike any other nation so do you think that do they have certain kind of uh, advantages genetic advantages or in terms of maybe the infrastructure or facilities what is your opinion on their dominance in the sport yes sir so as far as swimming is concerned genetics does play significant role in terms of height muscle strength and the type of body uh, appearance and offspring has so but that can be overcome with the help of training uh, which is important uh, but sir in india the problem is that we do not have infrastructure for swimming in the uh, tier 1 2 cities or uh, at the rural or even at the town level so swimming pool is not there and so even with that we do not have functionaries the faculties the courses are uh, largely not present Uh, so that is the reason why india is not flaring in the early uh, way so there are 37 events of swimming in olympic in which include both male and female which does uh, uh, pose significant amount of uh, gold medal to the country uh, so i think that is the reason uh, for the poor performance that we are not able to focus have you participated in any events uh, competitions swimming competitions Uh, yes, sir. I used to participate uh, while playing water polo, but that was only at, oh, till the participation level only. Okay, in swimming, I mean, in terms of swimming, I, I was mentioning any yes, swimming. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I that was only water polo. No, no. So I used to play the game, uh, freestyle, uh, freestyle, as well as breaststroke. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So, uh, it seems uh, that there is a increasing call. for adding you know uh, marathi language as one of the classical languages as well right so do you know something about what are classical languages yes sir so in india there are six classical languages which is mm-hmm. sanskrit tamil malayalam kannada then uh, oriya and telugu these are the six languages uh, which is termed to be classical So the criteria include it should have antiquity of around twenty two thousand years, fifteen hundred to two thousand year old. It should mm-hmm. be considered as uh, important uh, for the generations of the native speaker, and it should have significant amount of literature. Uh, as far as our Marathi is concerned, it is considered to be an offshoot of Saurashtri, which is again mm-hmm. is an uh, offshoot of uh, Prakrit language. thus uh, because of the lack of continuity uh, that is uh, the first issue second issue is that uh, people do consider marathi as well as the kadambaris and granth mm-hmm. which is written as the important uh, for the history uh, but the first two conditions are not met so that is the reason why marathi is not yet uh, given the status okay uh, have you heard about the recent uh, joshi mat issue Yes, sir. I'm aware about it. Yeah. So, number one is what is your opinion about the, the reasons of the same, and secondly, what can be done about uh, such areas which are ecologically and geologically fragile? Okay. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, because it leads to directly human aspect, their survival and the human security. Okay, and because of which a lot of translocation has happened. For certain families, right? So, how can we avoid such instances? Yes, sir. So, the population growth has put severe, uh, severe uh, impact on the fragile ecosystem. So, the recent creating of the infrastructural projects in an unplanned manner, manner, have again led to the serious thing of the event. NTPC have again sir uh, established one of the hydroelectric power in the uh, nearby basin, so it also has uh, put significant amount. So the these are the geographically fragile zone, and uh, in order to tackle it, sir, uh, first we can start with creating the wooden houses the way it is there in United States or Europe. 
so that would uh, reduce the weightage of the concrete and uh, the other material even sir the creation of the roadway uh, it should be used with a light weight such as asphalt etc should be used in order to create durable but uh, light weight road and so the projects which are being made uh, there is need for environmental impact assessment even based upon what it is going to have impact on the native so that is my opinion sir okay but uh, there is also you know a lot of debate about various infrastructure projects around that area right so do you believe they should be recalled now uh, considering the instances which are happening like ntpc has their thermal plant and many other hydro projects are also in the vicinity sir i believe this zone comes under the uh, economically sensitive and fragile zone and uh, thus environmental impact assessment uh, would have been carried out sir so, so but still it has happened i mean in spite of let's uh, because there, there were so many reports earlier also yes, might be aware that uh, such projects should not have happened but still they took place right and then we see the results so do you feel that at this stage we should uh, continue with the projects which are already going on there or it's time to recall them so we have put on significant amount of resources i believe we should continue and complete the projects and hence for the any projects we are going to complete uh, we should go for a detailed scrutiny and even more uh, uh, difficult or severe sort of environmental impact assessment can be carried out there uh, i yes sir uh, what do you feel about the aryan invasion theory many believe it's a myth some say it's a true right so what is your opinion about the ait so india has been a mosaic of the various waves of migration from all over the part for example from northeastern part or for that matter central asia so the uh, it is largely believed that it was a colonial construct in order to divide the people uh, even the various uh, social social scientists do not agree to the uh, view of aryan invasion and uh, Term it to be the social uh, colonial construct, and I do believe on the same issue. Sir. Okay, but then, you know, uh, so what? What proofs uh, are there in order to, which are upcoming, which can say that go against the belief of Aryan invasion theory? So the biggest uh, proof in support of it is the color of the skin, as uh, the people believe that the natives were uh, even in the rigveda the use term has been mentioned as native being of a darker color tone and uh, the aryans being of the lighter tone so that is the one thing sir so but we, uh, we also have fair people in india right yes sir so that so... fair people are yes sir that fair people are considered to be the migrants from the central asia but so then, then, so more... then that this proves that aryan invasion theory was there then no sir this does not prove aryan invasion theory of uh, uh, was there it proves that there was a migration of people okay but sir mm. association of a word aryan and uh, we do not even have a particular data regarding what aryan constitutes okay that is uh, one of the issues uh but if you look at the overall geography of india right we believe that we have been separated from africa so who can we consider uh, as the original inhabitants of india is it the black sir, men a... or is it the fair men <laughs> sir there is a theory be... called as... yeah mm -hmm. huh? yeah yeah then so there is a theory of out of africa which says that uh, around 6 million years ago there was a migration from africa and the skin of color the type of body is nothing but the adaptation to the changing climate and uh, that we have reached to india that we have to the other part of the world as well so that okay. is nothing but yes sir so talking of climate you know uh, how has the environment helped in the human evolution yes sir so uh, environment have uh, 
impacted severely for the reduction of the bodily hair uh, which was uh, due to the reduction of the temperature so the color of the skin is because of the temperature uh, mm-hmm. and uh, the amount of sunlight goes in this the circumference of the chest depends upon the height as well as on the uh, pole word or equator word the person uh, the height is also dependent upon the similar uh, sort of uh, parameters sir uh, so these are the uh, impact of environment on the human body sir uh, up to the best of my knowledge okay. uh you have mentioned about playing online chess right so how do you differentiate it from playing physical chess and what do you cherish more right online chess or physical chess sir i cherish online chess more because uh, this way i get to interact with various player across the world right from uh, kazakhstan uh, europe or africa many countries participate in the event so this, this is the best part about it uh, sir i in order to have a different opinion sir it's like we do not get quality players around us or we only get one or two players at max uh so that limitation has been taken out by online uh, chess and thus that is something that i uh, cherish more okay uh so one last question for today yes sir yeah so uh if let's say you are posted into uh jammu and kashmir into ladakh region right yes. so uh what will be your developmental priorities there as an administrator and for the well being of the people there yes sir so ladakh has a image of a tourist union territory so for primarily sir i'll focus on the tri- uh, development of tourism sector by creating roadways infrastructure such as staying of the hotel as well as marketing and promotion of it so that more people come so that way sir uh, we can create local environment uh, local uh, employment for the people sir uh, that area the ladakh also has hanle observatory so it also uh, host scope for space tourism so i think that can also be used but if you see uh, tourism is already on the rise in ladakh yes, but in turn it has led to some problems like you know people going into the sacred lakes causing pollution right in fact many ladakhis are now raising their voice against this growing tourism right which affects their uh, kind of the sacred lakes or the environment in which they are staying right on the other hand there are uh, challenges of chinese intrusions as well which makes ladakh uh, more or less a uh, dynamic area because of which people also try to settle or migrate outwards okay so there are two sides of the same coin so then based upon this assessment then how would you term your policies yes so uh, my policies will be based upon the coordination and cooperation with various stakeholders So, sir, yes, the locals. I will take into the confidence, and we will tell them what are the benefits of the tourism. And first thing, sir, there are issues regarding their native sacred places. So, I would make arrangements for the protection of them by basic such as fencing, or by uh, the boards. Even local committees can be made for that purpose. Second, sir, as the population density in Ladakh is low. so uh, a lot of more areas can even be developed for the tourism sectors and not just around the uh, sacred places which are being worshiped by the people uh, so the area uh, do not have much of a resource but it also has geothermal energy potential of geothermal energy so that can also be utilized that can also be uh, taken in with the recent uh, uh, connection with the national uh, net grid national sorry national electricity grid so then this electricity can also be transferred to the nearby states the union territory of the democracy okay these were the policy
Hello. Uh, thank you, Pratik. Thank you. Sir.